Hey Wanderers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Ron. Welcome to Wanderlust. And this is Military Chatter. So Military Chatter is our weekly stop where we talk about our lives in the military. And if you've missed any of them or if you haven't seen them at all, there will be a link to the playlist above. You can start there first. Although we're starting a new series today, so you won't be missing anything. But today we're talking about chaplaincy. And we decided to start with a what we know the most about in the military. <laughs> and so we're kind of going to do this like an interview style because he's the chaplain and I'm not. So I'm going to ask the questions and then we'll, he'll answer. And then if there's anything that I feel like I need to add just because I like to talk, then I will add it. Yeah. So before we get started, uh, disclaimer, the opinions are mine. They do not represent the Department of Defense, the U.S. Air Force, or the United States Air Force Chaplains Corps. These are my opinions. Hopefully, they're good ones and they line up with, uh, with, with all those entities, but they are my opinions. So you might see us looking down because we have our notes down here, so it's okay. But the first question is, what are the difference in chaplains in the different branches? All right, so each branch of the military, actually three of the branches of the military, have chaplains. So the Navy, the Army, and the Air Force all have chaplain corps. So the Marines and the Coast Guard don't have their own chaplains. We'll, we'll talk about where they get their chaplains from. So each branch has its own culture um, and chaplains in a little different way because of the different mission sets for those branches. So we'll start with the Navy. The Navy has really kind of four major paths for chaplains. So they've got uh, ship duty. So being assigned to a ship like a, a carrier, maybe a destroyer or something, and you're going to go out with that ship when it's out at sea and, and be out there for you know nine months or however long it's out at sea. And you're, you're going to live and breathe with those sailors while you're doing that. Uh, the other major half that most people are aware of is shore duty. So maybe you would be assigned to a naval station or a naval air station where you are going to do ministry there at that station. You're not really going to go anywhere um, because you're going to be there serving the people. Rota is a good example of that. There were chaplains that Rota were... Rota in Spain. In Spain were assigned to that. But the destroyer squadron that's there had its own chaplain that went out with, with them. The he was on ship right. duty and the people who served the base chapel were on shore duty. Uh, they also, there are two other uh, distinct, bran uh, not branches, but kind of paths in there. Um, and one is the, uh, the Marines are part of the Department of the Navy. So the Marines are not their own branch. Right. They call them a branch, but they're part of the Navy. Right. right. So, Which so, was hard for me to understand. At the so they, they don't have their own, their own chaplains. A Marine chaplain is a Navy chaplain who is serving with Marines. Do you pick that as a chaplain? Like, do you say, I want to be in the Marines? No, because uh, uh, similar to how in the, in the Air Force, we're all going to go through different major commands. Uh, a chaplain, as they go through the ranks, they're going to get that seizing and, and be with all four. So the fourth one is okay. the Coast Guard. So again, the Coast Guard doesn't have its own chaplain. Is the Coast Guard part of the Navy too? No, they, they are. But they have Navy chaplains. They have Navy chaplains because they're not, they, they're, they're they're unique in that they have a homeland security type mission. Right, they're not combat, right? Right. Okay. Right. Um, but there's air chaplains, because I have a very good friend who, who did a, a stint as a Coast Guard chaplain. So, but yeah, so you're you're gonna see chaplains bounce through all of those. And you're gonna have chaplains who, quite frankly, they, they just really wanna be with Marines because they fit with that, or they like ship duty or whatever. So, so just like in any of us, like in the Air Force, we, we may prefer to be in this command because we, we So just like we may want to be in a particular command because we, we like fighters or maybe we like the mission of education and training, it's the same thing. You've got chaplains who want to be a Marine chaplain because they like to be with the grunts and get dirty, that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, so we did the Navy. So then you've got the, the Army Chaplain Corps. Now the, the Army is where we came out of. Uh, the, the Air Force started as the Army Air Corps and the Army Air Forces, so we have a lot of links culturally to their history, but the Army's model, and especially as it applies to the Chaplain Corps, is a much more expeditionary model. So because... What's expeditionary mean? So you're going to go out with the people. 
So uh, you're going to have chaplains all the way down to the company level. So in, in the Army, you, you've got companies and you've got battalions and you've got brigade, brigades. You're going to have chaplains at all those levels. But you're going to have a, a, like a company grade chaplain may be just a chaplain for a company. And they're going so, to go with that unit wherever it goes. So the Army then has the most number of chaplains. Absolutely. Yes. yes. I mean, they have It's to. huge. But that model, The, ar the Army me, is the largest... Uh, of, of our uh, branches and then and because of this model they also have the largest chapel and, and this model in my opinion is the best model to have well it, it is as long as you have the manpower to do it as long Absolutely. as you have the number of chaplains to do it 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 has to in my opinion it has to work better than the sporadic visitation that happens in other branches because they just have to the, they, or the the ratio of chaplain to uh, I don't know if the ratio is that much any better because the army is that much larger. Um, okay, maybe. But but you're gonna you are gonna be embedded and you're gonna be a part of that mission set much more than and especially for the Air Force, which we'll talk about kind of how that model differs uh, here in just a minute. So they're they're much more with the soldiers. Uh, they're they're with that particular mission. Um, and so again, a little more expeditionary. So you know when this unit goes forward. The chaplain goes with them. So are they sort of assigned more to a unit than to a post? Yes, yes. So, so in the in the army, a chaplain works directly for whatever commander, for whatever level unit they're assigned to. Um, you do okay. have those chaplains that are assigned to garrison. So, okay. So, so that's the whole post. Is that's a garrison. for the whole post. Um, but, but but still, but even when you're assigned in the in the army, what's a little different. Is even if, if you're assigned to let's say a brigade at a post, um, if you still technically fall under the 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 post chaplain because it's a rank thing. Whoever the highest ranking chaplain is at where you're assigned, you still have to take direction from them. It's a little different. We'll talk about the Air Force here. So so, so th their 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 waters get a little muddy. Well, okay. So my question, I guess, is. Um, there are, I'm just making up numbers, but let's say there are four, whatever an army unit would be at a certain garrison or post. Okay. So there are four of them there and they each have a chaplain and then the garrison has a chaplain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the garrison probably has a chaplain and, and a staff that's so the garrison. So do all five of them work together to make the chapel building run? Uh, like who's in charge of services? Does that garrison, fall under the garrison? The garrison, but the garrison chaplain can say, I, "I don't care that you work for this brigade. You're also going to run this service." Right. Okay, that makes sense. So, so, so that there's, even though you work for this commander, you also, the the chaplain can tell you, "Here's how right. it should and go." Right, and you could be preaching and also. Yeah leading but, studies and everything that are outside of your specific garrison and, yeah. and are post-wide. Yes. I keep wanting to say base, not post. I'm trying. So, and then there's us, the Air Force. This is, this is the world I know best. So, so the Air Force, while we're working towards a more expeditionary sort of model, we're more of a parish-based model. And that comes out of our history as the Air Force, and we'll use World War II as a great example. Uh, whereas in the army, uh, you're going to send a bunch of privates to take a hill, so the chaplain's going to be with that group, and they're going to go do that. In the air force, the uh, the enlisted crew chief is going to put the officer in his fighter and say, "Go get him, sir," and we'll see you when you get back. So, so in the air air force, you know, we uh, the chaplain doesn't need to go with the unit because the unit's going to go forward, do its job, and then come back. From some sort of base now, whether that's a uh, that's a home station like with with long range bombers, you know they can launch from maybe where they are and go do their thing and they come back, or it's from a a forward operating location. We get to say FOB. FOB forward operating base, <laughs> um, and and they're going to go out and they're going to come back and there'll be a chaplain that's there. So chaplains in the Air Force are uh, are usually assigned to the wing or, or, or whatever organization that runs that. So you know, at, at a major base, chaplains, most of the chaplains are assigned to the wing, um, and then, then we do work in units and we're dispersed into units. And that's units. how it is here. That's yes. how it's been everywhere we've gone, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, but except I for, mean, except in Spain, which wasn't a wing, it was right. a squadron. But exactly. the rest of the time, it's been wings. Right. Uh, but the the biggest part is that. Uh, it, like you, you talk about, it, it's, it's sort of a home base sort of thing. Now, we are working towards, we want to be more embedded in units. 
But that comes down to manpower. Okay, so question number two. Mm -hmm. How do you become a chaplain? All right, so I'm going to address specifically how to become an Air Force chaplain because that's the, the world I know and, and, and how I came into the ministry, although I don't think it's too dissimilar uh, across the other two branches, but I don't want to speak for them because I, I don't know that world. So there are, uh, there are a few qualifications, things that you need to become a chaplain. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to have to have a Master's of Divinity or an accepted equivalent from a, um, an acknowledged institution. So Master's of Divinity is, when I graduated, I think it was 87 credit hours. It's somewhere in the mid-90s now. So 97 credit hours to get your Master's of Divinity. Um, and so, so we joke that, uh, that pastors and chaplains, they get their Master's in the time most people get their doctorate. Um, so you're going to need to have that, that Master's of Divinity. You could maybe have a Master's of, of Arts and Religion or, or, or in, in some other classes. The, your individual um, branch is going to determine what meets the qualification, but you are going to need some sort of post-secondary education uh, to be able to get that uh, specifically in and around some sort of religious capacity. But uh, Masters of Divinity is the most most common. Second thing you're going to need is you're going to need an endorsement by a recognized religious body. So I'm endorsed by the United Methodist Church, and they have their own process. Uh, and there's a list of, oh, I can't even remember the number. Uh, maybe we can look it up and, and pop the number up at the top. But, but there are a couple hundred different endorsing bodies that are recognized by the Armed Forces Chaplain Board. And can you so, just Google that to find out if your denomination is one? Yes, you should be. And, and there are some that are not denominations. They're, 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 right, they're, they're, or they're, religions. Right. right. Well, I'm not, I'm not even saying that. So, like, there is um, there's one that's kind of evangelical, but it's not for a particular church. It covers several church bodies. But in this case, it's from a particular Christian standpoint. Um, so you're going to need that endorsement. And each endorser is going to have their own requirements. So, like, my endorsement as United Methodist has the, its qualifications are what you need uh, to become a chaplain. So it fits very, 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 very easily. Uh, but there may be some where the endorsement isn't as rigorous uh, and you're going to have to do things on top of your endorsement to make sure that you meet the qualifications for the Air Force. And, and that endorsing body thing it is, is key because we get a lot of questions for, well, why don't we have Wiccan chaplains? Or why don't we have humanist chaplains? And what that boils down to is that there is no recognized endorsing body for those. So, so will we use uh, uh, Wiccan uh, or, or pagan or, or, or whatever that, um, that you, whatever phraseology you want to use for that? There's such a breadth of differences that there's no one body that says this person, we, we, we will uh, endorse them and say this person is qualified to serve. In the chaplain corps, we have five religious traditions. We have Protestant Christian and Catholic Christian, and they both wear the cross. So uh, you can't tell just from looking at the uniform whether they're a Protestant or a Catholic. We have Muslim, which have the crescent moon. We have Jewish, which has the tablets, and then we have Buddhists, which has the Buddhist wheel. And those are the only those are the five chaplain uh, categories that we have. We don't have other ones because there's no, no endorsing there's no endorsing body that has worked with the uh, the Armed Forces Chaplain Board to be recognized. Um, so you're going to need that endorsement. <clears throat> so just a quick question, though, because sure. I know we're going to address this more in depth. But mm -hmm. um, a pagan does come to you, and they want to have some kind of um, I almost said liturgical, but some kind of paperwork, or they need to request something. Mm -hmm and they want to find um, maybe a Wiccan worship thing in the city that you live in. So a Wiccan comes to my door and is, is just moved to the area and work, wants to find a coven to, to use their, the, 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 the different phrases. Then I'm going, I can't provide that. That is not, I'm, I shouldn't provide that because that's not where I come from. We're going to provide for by finding those resources for them. So, so we're going we're gonna to use our connections to find them the resources that they need. And you know, like you said, we'll cover that more in depth when we, we talk about duties. But, but even, if you're not one of the five, then yes, we're going to be able to find ways to support you. That, that's mostly what I was asking. Like. So you're also going to need two years of civilian pastoral experience. And that's going to vary um, 
as to what the recruiting service, um, as, as they assess you on the act in sessions, what they're going to accept as viable. Um, and, and so I, I, I don't know exactly what those standards are. And I'm going to need at least two years of civilian experience uh, because you, you, you may that did great in your MDiv, uh, and your church is like, yeah, you're great, but we need to know that you can put together a sermon. Uh, that if we say, hey, we need you to write a prayer for this event, that you are able to do that. So, so that's so. Those are the three things that you need, and those come together with something that they've added in the last few years, uh, which is every chapel chaplain assessed on the active duty for the Air Force at least has a, a face-to-face interview. Oh wow! Not just with the recruiter. Right. No. With with I, and I, I don't know the makeup of who all's down there, but I know know some of our um, you know folks who are serving now serve on that. And, and basically, it's to, to assess and see if it's a good fit because we are we're chaplain to all pastor to some. So if that Wiccan walks to the chaplain's door and, and we think they're going to have a really hard time supporting that individual, even to, to find someone else to provide something for them, maybe they're not a good fit for uh, for act, for service in, in the branch. Right. So... So that's, that's that's what has to happen, and then once once you get all that, and, and the recruiting service, you know, work goes to the assessions board and says yes, we'll bring this person to duty, then you're going to come in with a direct commission, and so that's uh, so they're uh, doctors, uh, so medical officers, JAG legal officers, and chaplains all come in with a direct commission, uh, which is different from folks who uh, who earn their commission uh, and come in as second lieutenant. So I came in as a first lieutenant. Most chaplains, uh, for the most part, come in as captain uh, in the medical field. Uh, I went through officer training school with an individual who was a lieutenant colonel um, because that was what their civilian experience, um, the that was the equivalent. I really like that. I mean, it's good in one way that you get credit for the things that you did as a civilian because the Air Force recognizes that experience, like life experience mm-hmm. and work experience, is worth something in the ranking system. The bad part of that is that she is a lieutenant colonel on day one. And so when you see lieutenant colonel, you expect them to know a certain amount of military stuff, not just dental stuff, but a certain amount of military stuff. And she's like brand new. She's practically like a second lieutenant in the stuff she knows as far as Air Force goes. And and that's, that's a challenge in the chaplain corps because we more than any other um, officer track, we stay captains. We we make the joke we're we're captain forever Uh, because it's about eight to 10 years that you are a captain as a chaplain. And so that can be dangerous because are you a six month captain or a six year captain? Right. Because there's a whole different level of experience depending on how long you've had those railroad tracks on. I remember um, you weren't in very long as a first lieutenant before nope. you became a captain. And I thought, oh, well, when do when do you get the next one? And you're like, it's at least eight years. And I was like, yeah. what? Like, it that seems so yeah, weird to me. Yeah, it was 10 years from, from, from pin on of captain to pin on of major. You, you find out before then because you, you're going to be uh, waiting for your turn to promote. But, yeah, uh, it's a long time as a captain. Right. Um, but, but it's that same thing. People will look and say, oh, you're a captain. Because a line officer captain, that means they've got at least four years in. Right. Because they've been a second lieutenant for two years, uh, first lieutenant for two years, they didn't screw up or get a DUI, and they're a captain. Um, whereas a brand new chaplain could walk in off the street and, and have been in for two weeks. Right. He's wearing the same bars, and he doesn't know anything. Right. So, um, you have to say the difference in line officer and not because that's going to bring up questions. Copy. <laughs> so, a line officer is basically anybody who's an officer not in a special category. So, so they're not they're not medical, they're not legal, they're not um, chaplain. Um, there are a couple of other different ones that, that are sub-branches but of those. But those are the main ones. I just yeah. think of it as the ones who got a direct commission, like he just mentioned, those three 
groups. I just remember that those three groups had to get a direct commission and everybody else earned their commission and so they're line officers. So, I don't so, know what that yeah. means. What is line officer? Like, the, 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 the line of the Air Force. So, the, so oh, they're, they're okay. doing, doing standard, you know, uh, they're, you know, they're a, a security forces officer or they're a, a senior officer. When we officer. first came in, I thought it had something to do with the flight line. <laughs> and so I thought for a while that only the officers well, that worked the flight well, line were and, called and line officers. That, I don't know the the history of it, but everything, all of those things directly support the flight line mission. So it may have oh, something yeah, to do with that. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's uh, right. it's a good question. Um, so we come with a direct commission, and so for as chaplains, we're going to go to officer training school. Uh, that used to be its own separate thing, but they now join that with uh, with line officers. It's called to Total Force Officer Training T5, uh, and so that now, now we're all having the, the basically the same experience. Uh, to do that and then after you do that as a chaplain you're going to go to what would be considered our, our technical school which is the basic chaplain course where you're uh, so uh, t thought is learning how to wear that rank and what's really important for us because while, while there are some folks who are prior enlisted uh, and came back in as a chaplain the majority of us didn't serve before and so we've got to learn what does it mean to wear that rank and how, how to function in that and then and all um, the rules about uniforms and what a uniform is supposed right, to look like right. and, and because as, as a chaplain you, you don't want you do you, I, this is this is certainly Ron's opinion you don't ever want anybody to go oh well, don't worry about his uniform he's just a chaplain uh, because I, I need to, to hold the standard as well because I'm an officer and a chaplain um, and then, uh, then you're gonna go basic chaplain course which is where you learn or right, here's here's what we do as chaplains here's how we function in this world um, here, here's how you provide for if you can't provide, and we give them all those tools to be able to do that. Most chaplains, I don't want to say most, but a considerable number of chaplains, we spend a little bit of time as reservists before we come on active duty. Uh, it's it's not super common, uh, although we've got two here uh, who do that, who come straight from civilian straight on to active duty. Um, but a lot of us, and, and sometimes it has to do with um, with meeting the requirements for active duty. As a United Methodist, I can serve in the reserves before I'm qualified to serve on active duty. And so a lot, a lot of uh, folks will, will, especially as a air, and not as like a traditional um, like air guard, uh, but will we'll serve as in air, the Air Force Reserve and, and, and be an individual mobilization augmentee um, IMA uh, to a base. And you sort of learn, that's what I did. So I, uh, my first two years, I was a reservist. So when I came on active duty, it wasn't all new. Uh, a lot of it was new, but not all of it. Whereas when someone comes in without that reserve time, I mean, they're literally learning everything, seeing everything for the first time. Right. It, could, it could be challenging. So we just answered two questions, I know, but um, we have more coming in the series. There's at least two more episodes and then a Q&A. So any questions that you guys have, put them down below and we will answer those. If you need more clarification on anything we talked about, we'll answer that as Absolutely. well. Um, I guess that's all, right? Yeah, thanks for joining us. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you got any questions, leave them down there. We'll, we'll make sure and address them in the next few episodes. See you later. Bye. Hey, Wanderers. Welcome. Mm -mm. Sorry. And our experience in the military, right? You want to start over on that? Yeah. <laughs>